2020 was a difficult year for many community agencies, and that includes Zoomix with its focus on culture and youth development in East Boston. But after a year of pivoting, Zoomix celebrated its 30th anniversary, and just before another cause for celebration, a surprise grant of $1 million from a high-profile donor, Mackenzie Scott, the former wife of Jeff Bezos, and her current husband, Dan Jewett, to tell us about the gift and what it could mean for the community are two guests from Zoomix, the co-founder and executive director, Madeline Sichinski, and the director of programs, Corey DePiner. I'd like to thank you both very much for being with us. Uh, I'll just start with uh, Madeline about uh, hearing about this. Uh, you know, this is a pretty big surprise, the, the amount of money and no strings attached. I, I mean, how do you handle that? Um. First of all, we have to we have to get used to the idea. Um, it really it really was such a surprise, and um, I mean to the point where at first we actually didn't believe it was true, um, and had to go through all sorts of hoops just to do due diligence to make sure that it wasn't a scam. Um, and and now we're really sitting with the with the information and feeling super grateful, um, and just feeling like wow, this was one of the hardest years of our thirty year history. And we made it through it and we were feeling good about that. And then this happened and that's just um, an incredible, incredible moment. So we're sitting with the information. Um, we, are, we haven't even met as a team yet. I'm, I'm on vacation. So I had heard about it while I was on vacation and Corey's still um, down in, in Boston working and we're, kind, we're all sort of separated, but we're looking forward to get together with our board and with our team um, to really think about this gift and how it can help us um, really support the organization for the next 30 years. Um, I, I think it's a really great sort of start on how to turn the corner, look at, you know, we've been spending a lot of time reflecting and looking back on the 30 years of our growth. Um, and we, this allows us to really start looking forward on the next 30 years and what we'd like to envision for that. Turn to Corey DePina, this is called uh, a transformative grant for a transformative organization. Um, how did it transform you going back to when you got involved as a student in Boston? Oh, yes. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having us. Uh, Zoomix transformed my life in so many ways. Um, the idea of having support and opportunity and connection are probably the best words uh, that I can use to describe it. Um, there aren't many resources in Boston for a young person to get free music lessons or to get the opportunity to go out and, you know, be in charge of a live sound gig and troubleshoot and to form relationships with people who tend to end up being your community when they grow up. Um, it's been really awesome. Uh, as an adult, um, a lot of my friends who are teenagers doing art are now professional adults doing art. As a teenager, I didn't really have a space at home or in school to be creative and to feel supported. So Zoomix transformed my life in so many ways, on a personal level, on an artistic level, uh, the idea of civic engagement. And as I got older, professional, to be able to like get paid and do what I like to do and be confident and have skills uh, that can, make me happy to get up to go to work and fulfill a job and at the same time be focused on a mission and you know and to understand what that means to like you know fulfill a mission and to have a target that you want to hit which is really awesome uh so many people's lives have transformed in our small little building and it's been really cool 30 years later to even now start serving children of children who are Zoomix participants, which has been really awesome. Uh, so it's been cool. Yeah, I can't say that. I can't imagine what my life would be like without the organization. And I'm really lucky. Uh, like a lot of people say, they wish they would have known about Zoomix when they were younger. I'm lucky to be able to say, I knew about it. <laughs> and, and I'm here, hopefully sharing the, the joy and the news with other people. Well, speaking of luck, one reason you knew about Zoomix is you just happened to be going to school in East Boston, and I guess there was this project that involved producing a public service announcement. I guess you sort of just got almost accidentally brought in through the door. It was definitely an accident. It was like a field trip to go and record something and Zoomix was offering those services. And I walked into someone's house 
with couches and like a bed in the side and a bathroom that if you lock the door, you lock got yourself locked in by accident and never left, Chris. I was there almost every day eating Madeline's snacks, asking for change to take the midnight train or a late train home after programming, helping them set up for concerts in the middle of the station square and like telling people about programs and like they were like, oh, can you go announce the next band? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll go announce the next band. And like int introducing the next bands and, and meeting people and feeling like a sense of community, which was really cool. And I didn't want to leave and I never did leave. I've been there for over 20 years, uh, learning, growing and teaching and helping other people. No, I want to I want to uh, ask you about another meaning of, of transformative. And this applied to a lot of agencies during the pandemic. Uh, last year, Zoomix was out there helping people who are going through food insecurity. When you're getting involved in, in something like that, what, what does that do to your sense of mission about Zoomix? Well, it makes me super grateful that we have such strong ties with the community um, and that we have a team of people who are interested in being of service in any way they can. Um, and while it's not our mission to deliver food to families, um, it is our mission to make sure that all of our young people have a sort of a network of support around them and that they are in the most stable living conditions. Um, so this year saw us really expand our services beyond you, you know, creative youth development and really think about families and how can we be of support to the families of the kids that are coming in the door because it's one thing for a young person to have um, classes and have a great relationship with their teacher, but if they don't have food at home or if they, their family is worried about losing their home, um, they're living in an unstable situation and that stress just bubbles over into everything. Um, and so we were able to utilize, uh, you know, to tap into a whole network of organizations working together in East Boston to source food, provide food, deliver food, and then in addition to help people in terms of housing security. Um, so we were able to uh, use some of our resources and some of our connections to access um, financial resources for families and to help them with that, um, to help families fill out the raft applications for rental assistance, um, to help families fill out uh, unemployment um, forms and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of more like social service kinds of work that we did this year, um, more than we normally would do but it just felt right. And there wasn't a question about it that we were, um, if we had the connections and we could make a connection on behalf of one family, that's one family that has a, a you know, stable home or that's one family that is going to eat tonight. And, um, and so we were able to do that um, throughout the whole year. And what was interesting is it really strengthened our connections with families. I actually just got a text message um, from one of our parents who um, he and his wife volunteered this, uh, this year to, to be with some of the drivers and they would show up with their kids um, once a week to drive food to other people's houses. So it was really uplifting. Um, and he's you know, congratulating me saying that he heard about the news and I'm thanking him just for being such an important part of our community and being willing to help. Um, and again, just feeling like the blessings are kind of uh, distributed amongst all of us. Like we're all just really grateful. So yeah, and I will say big shout out to the team at Zoomix that, that really led the charge in terms of our mutual support. Um, Brittany Thomas, Carolina Ticona, um, Omar Sosa, um, they, they really led the charge, um, but we were all involved in it. Corey, uh, you, you've had a, a year of mostly virtual programming. Now things are, are going back toward in-person. You've got a concert coming up in July 11th and a walk for music. How, how does it feel to be moving in that direction now? Exciting. Um, one of the things that we do really well is play music together. And we haven't been able to play music together for over a year uh, because everything's been virtual. Uh, it's also a little scary. Uh, we wanna make sure that people feel safe, they feel welcomed and that we're following guidelines and people uh, 
you know, can have a good time and feel safe in our spaces. Uh, but the excitement is there. Our young people want to be back together. Our instructors want to play music and be in the rooms with young people making noise. Um, it's been really exciting. And I think our community really wants some opportunities also to reconnect and to like hear music out in open public spaces and to, you know, see their friends again it's been definitely an interesting year and my brain goes right to like even seeing the little puppies and animals <laughs> and, and pets that we haven't seen all year that usually walk by the building every day um so we're really excited and we're, we're we've spent you know a lot of time being really thoughtful about how we re-engage the audience and reconnect people um so that it's not you know zero to a hundred real quick but a process that's like really thoughtful really encouraging and um hopefully gets us back to a place where we can continue to celebrate each other and be in spaces. Uh, Metal, I want to ask you about that. It's about people being in spaces, uh, let's say like a concert at, at Piers Park. It's not just the people who are immediately involved in Zoomix. You've got other people in the neighborhood, different kinds of people. What, what's the importance of being able to generate that kind of experience? Well, it's huge, um, Chris. I think this was, um... Again, I said this was one of the hardest years for us, but also for, for our nation. This was a really, really difficult year with so many um, layers of uh, just, you know, uh, trauma and, and uh, bad news and, and, you know, the racial disparities, the health issues, the isolation, the mental health issues. Um, it's layer after layer of really difficult topics. Um, and I think that as a leader of an organization that serves so many different kinds of people, it really was evident to me that everybody's experiencing this year differently, um, but everybody's struggling. And so nobody got off scot-free, everybody's working, but, but I mean, everybody's working through this. But um, the, I think the idea of holding these concerts in Pierce Park, it really, I think will make it feel like we can collectively breathe again, we can be with each other, we can celebrate the diversity of our neighborhood, the beauty of our community, um, the, you know, the fact that we can be together in a beautiful space and that that space has a very important um, history and significance in, the, in our neighborhood in terms of it really being um, a win in terms of mitigation with the long-term kind of challenging relationship that we have with Massport. And so that space means a lot to the neighborhood. The view is unbelievably beautiful. It's well-designed space so that people can find a way to engage that is more comfortable for them. Um, and so, you know, if people are vaccinated and they wanna sit on the same blanket with their you know, neighbors, they can. And if they um, don't feel comfortable doing that, they can find a space um, to sit alone and still enjoy the, the beauty of it all. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that and to welcoming people back. We're thrilled that Walk for Music is gonna land on the, the opening day of our concerts. So July 11th, we will be getting together officially for the first time as a large group, welcoming everybody to join us um, for a short walk. It's about two miles. And then we will end in Pierce Park for a wonderful concert um, with a band that also has a lot of significance. It's called the Don't Be Denied Band. Um, and it was founded by one of our board members, Steven Snyder, but it also includes a lot of Zoomix current staff, former staff, alumni, et cetera. Um, and a local artist, Alana Held, is gonna open that night. So it's, it's gonna be a big celebration and we're thrilled. And it will really, I think, allow everybody to just kind of like say, okay, we've arrived. Well, finally, uh, and briefly, uh, if people want more information about events and programs, you've got a website they can check that out on? Indeed we do www.zoomix.org. That's Z-U-M-I-X dot org. Well, thank you, you find us on very social, much. You can find us on social media also, Instagram and Facebook. We have our both pages and YouTube also, if you want to check us out. That's right. Thank you very much, both of you. Corey, Chris, it's so nice to see you. Um, it's been a long time and uh, it's really wonderful to reconnect. Thank you for uh, mm. helping us tell the story. We're really, really honored. and. You know, there's so many great organizations that were funded and it feels that um, we're just honored to be on a list and to share that with so many great other organizations. So thank you to Mackenzie Scott and Dan Jewett. You guys are doing really incredible philanthropy work. Thank you. Happy to share the news. Corey DePina and Madeline Stachinsky from Zoomix. We'll have more news in just a moment.